This next one, sent to Corny Drive Thru, excuse me, sent on Twitter using the hashtag Corny Drive Thru from the Big Squeeze. The Big Squeeze! The Young Bucks gave an interview that basically said they have too many stables and it's too hard to book guys by themselves. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. I think there's some grammar problems with this question. Have you seen this interview? No! What? They they came out and said, yeah, we fucked this all up? No, I, I think the question got it wrong. Let me find the exact quote, and then I'll go to the interview. The interview is with TV Insider and Scott Fishman. And at one point here, the question... Sounds fishy to me. It sounds fishy to you. The question comes up, how do you respond to the argument that there are too many groups or factions in AEW right now? And then Nick Jackson said, New Japan Pro Wrestling has been booking factions for more than 40 years, and they're still around. I see the argument, but I think North American fans have never seen this many at one time. They are used, no shit. They are used to one, two, or three stables in a company. It's easier to book angles. It's easier to get more people involved with different groups. If you're not aligned in a stable, you're alone. And that's hard to book sometimes. Oh my god! That's why we have a lot of factions. Oh. It has clearly worked. It clearly. Clearly. Because nobody, absolutely nobody, knows who's on whose side, who's mad at each other, or why, or even who is in what group. Because everybody's in a group and they fucking bop back and forth at the drop of a hat. And this this is what... It's almost like I'm listening to somebody talk about a completely different thing. And it's not just if you asked anybody who has been involved in professional wrestling for more than 20 years they would say the exact opposite of what that Nimrod just said. It's harder when everybody's in a group. It's easier when somebody's by themselves. It's, it's, that's exactly the antithesis of what anybody in the history of wrestling up until about 15 or 20 years ago, maybe not even that, would have said. I'm... It's, it, and almost like you would have to sit down and figure out what is the exact opposite of a true statement that I can make. Let me write it down to make it as opposite as possible from what the actual fact of the matter is, and then I'll say that. That's how far off from any kind of normal wrestling logic that is. But I expect nothing less from those two fucking morons. The headline of the article in TV Insider is AEW's Matt and Nick Jackson are done being the Disney version of the Young Bucks. <laughs> well, good. What, what line of work are they taking up next? You don't like them any better as heels than you did as baby faces? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, <laughs> they're not battling against the tide as heels because the natural reaction to any professional wrestling fan to watching the young bucks is why are these people on my fucking television look at these fucking children playing wrestler and can they please go the fuck away so at least if they're heels that's a that's not exactly the reaction anybody wants would you please go away but at least it's more they're not battling against the tide but what have i said on this entire program small children imitating wrestlers' moves with no fucking visual credibility and their tongue in their cheek that they don't really mean anything and they're playing a part and they bop back and forth in the part they're playing every time the wind blows. Are the heels, are they baby faces, are they mad at this guy because of all the factions? It's fucking, it's basically, again, a small little private club just like Ring of Honor was at one time when they went on television. The, ring, the existing Ring of Honor fans were just bullshit that we would try to actually explain all of these weird wrestling quirks that no, no other company did, the handshakes and all that stuff. It took their private club away. Well, they, the Young Bucks and their ilk 
have a small private club group of fans that like to see children imitate wrestling and do cheerleading moves and gymnastics. Most people don't like that and they ain't never going to. So whether they're heels, baby faces, it doesn't matter what they do. As Pat Malone, the green shadow, used to say, I'll fight you, fuck you, or run you a foot race. I'm going to win either way. It's the same thing. Whatever they do is going to be the same thing. All the little goofy fucking children, children fans are going to like it. And the people watching the biography of Stone Cold Steve Austin are going to imagine, what the fuck if Austin came down and picked his teeth with those two little grade schoolers? Where's the real men? So, no, I don't like them any better as heels than baby faces because it's fucking preposterous. And they say stupid shit like that. And then an amateur fucking former fantasy federation booker online looks to them like they're veterans and they know somehow they're wrestling experts because of all the many years they've been around wrestling. I've got underwear in my drawer that are older than either one of them. And he thinks that's the way you book, which is why the fucking show looks like it does. So what would yeah, he said there, this is a way of getting as many people on the show as possible. Yes. Get everybody you can on the show. Get everybody a payoff. This is make a wish. We're operating make a wish here. All these guys that want to be wrestlers and always have wanted to be wrestlers in the worst way possible. And that's exactly how they do it. Now get to be wrestlers on Tony Khan's dime. Because he thinks that people like the fucking Cucamonga kids are wrestling experts. They're experts in doing this kind of shit that you see them do that appeals to a small group of people. And most people walking around go, what the fuck is that shit all about? And that's where we are. But now they're getting a chance to do it on television. 